So let's talk about velocity briefly and how we can calculate things using velocity, make some, write some definitions. This is, uh, some of this is stuff that's, this is based on things you've been doing for a very long time. You probably started doing problems involving speed, distance, and time when you were in fourth grade, right? A car goes 30 miles an hour for half an hour. How far did it go? 15 miles. Okay. So, so this is very familiar. We're making this precise. We're doing it in three dimensions. And we're going to be able to use it to predict the behavior of systems into the future, where something's going to be, how fast it'll be going. So we define the average velocity of an object, of a system, in the following way. And this is a definition, so we'll write it as V average is defined as the change in its position in three dimensions. So we have, we've been using R relative to some origin here to represent a position. What are these F and I things? Final initial. So we're taking some time interval that starts at some initial time and ends at some final time divided by the change in time. So change in position or displacement divided by the time. And remember, we're going to use the symbol delta to represent change. So we can write this as a delta R divided by a delta T. And that's a definition of average velocity. And we note that this is a pretty compact way of encoding a lot of information because since velocity, and of course this has units of meters per second, because velocity is a three-dimensional vector, position is a three-dimensional vector. So in fact, what we really have written here is a vector that's x final, y final, z final minus x initial, y initial, z initial divided by t final minus t initial. Um, or we can say, and that's equal to v average x component, v average y component, v average z component, and, and so there basically there are really three equations in here. So v average x is x final minus x initial over delta t, et cetera, et cetera. So a 3D vector equation is really three component equations. Now, this is something, this definition is something that you need to know. You need to memorize and really know um, and the reason is that it makes it impossible to have a conversation if you don't. Now, this isn't particularly hard, but you need to get it right with all the vector symbols. It's sort of like if you were trying to have a conversation with a friend about basketball, and every time you started to talk, your friend said, wait, what's a pass? I don't remember what that is. Let me look at my notes. What is dribbling? I don't, well, you just couldn't talk about it. Okay, there's some things you just actually have to, have to know in order to be able to have conversations, and this is one of them. So let's, let's use the definition to calculate an average velocity. So here's our origin. And I'll be the system. So here's my initial location. So what do we think my initial location is? Negative, negative what? Negative 1. Well, okay, what's me? So, so usually we use the center of mass of an object, which is probably right around here. Okay, so we'll, we'll consider me to be a point located at my center of mass, which is right around the belt buckle. So negative, okay, so let's write it down. I'll go back to that position, but so we have our Initial was, you said, negative 1. And 
and a negative 0.4. And what about Z? What was Z? One meter. Okay, now I'm going to walk to a final location, and we need to know how long it takes. Okay, so negative 1.4. 1. Okay, so we have to start counting. Count seconds. Okay. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011. Okay, 11 seconds. I got all the way to here. What's my position? That's true. Is that uncomfortable? <laughs> um, okay, so still probably negative 1 meters in the x direction. Uh, Close to zero in the y. Yeah. Z is, what do you think? Meters? 11 meters is 33 feet. That's kind of long. Uh, yeah, so seven? Seven. Okay. So our final. Uh, negative one. Zero seven meters and delta T was eleven seconds and so the average was negative one minus negative one uh zero minus negative point four 7 minus 1 meters divided by 11 seconds, which comes out to, okay, we can do the zero easily. What's 0.4 over 11? Well, 0.4 over 10 would be 0.04. We could make our life simpler if we estimated it to be 10 seconds, couldn't we? So that would make it 0.04. 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by so 0 0.6 meters per second. Okay? Now I'm going to do it again. Ready? 1,001, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. <laughs> All right. So uh, my final position was the same. My initial position was the same. The time was the same. What was my average velocity? It was the same, wasn't it? Now, it didn't tell you everything about what was going on there, did it? So average velocity, the way it's defined, uh, tells you over that time interval what happened on the average. And, and if we use this average velocity to calculate where something's going to be, it would give us the right answer. Um, but it didn't tell us all the details of variations. And for that, of course, we need to talk about the instantaneous velocity. So average velocity and instantaneous velocity are not the same thing. So let's, let's think about this a little bit. Um, OK, we know it's channel 46, right? So we can get rid of that. So we have a bee flying in a straight line at constant speed. So that means its velocity really is constant. At 15 seconds after 9 a.m., its position is 240 meters. At 15.5 seconds after 9 a.m., its position is 3, 3.50 meters. What's the average velocity of the bee? Okay, the most popular answer is certainly five. A few people say four. Let's check these out. 
basically what we're going to do is just apply this equation. So what we should end up with is the average is equal to the final position, which is 3, 3.50 meters minus the initial position, which is 240 meters divided by the time, which is 0.5 seconds. Delta T is 0.5 seconds. So that looks like it should be 3 minus 2 is 1. 3.5 minus 4 is a negative 0.5. 0 divided by 0.5, 1 divided by 0.5 is 2, negative 1, 0 uh, meters per second, which is indeed answer 5. Um, what happened if you said, so why is 3 not the answer? It's not a vector. That's right. Velocity is a vector. That's a scalar. Might be the speed, actually. It could be the magnitude of this, but it's not. Okay. Questions about that? Been doing that kind of stuff since fourth grade. A slightly more interesting version of this uh, equation is actually just a re an algebraic rearrangement, but it suggests the ability to predict things, which is one of the things we want to be able to do. So what we're going to do is just rearrange this equation so that it says our final is equal to our initial plus the average delta t. Okay, That's the same equation, but rearranged in a form that says that we call the position update equation. Because it says if you know the average velocity of an object, and you know how long it's traveling at that average velocity, and you know where it started, you can figure out where it's going to be at the end of that time interval. So you can predict its location. So let's just try to apply it. It's not a particularly complicated equation. It's one that should be fairly easy to apply. Uh, so here's a ball. It's got initial position is 28, negative 12 meters relative to some origin. Uh, at that moment, its velocity is 9, negative 4, 6 meters per second. If we make the assumption that that velocity at that moment is, is, is a good approximation to its average velocity during the next uh, time interval, where will the ball be at 12.21 seconds after 1.30? Okay, so that's the question. So let's calculate it using this equation, right? That's all there is to do. Okay, 30 seconds. The quiz you'll have time, the quiz you've got to get right. The quizzes are, are a way for you to monitor your understanding of some, some basic operations. The test will include multiple, some multiple choice questions that are very much like quiz questions that you just, some of them will be very straightforward, just got to get them right. So you'll find out about the quiz. Okay? Let's see what you said. Answer two. That is correct. So what you did is simply use that equation. And so you said, our final is our initial, which was 28, negative 12 meters plus 9, negative 4, 6 
meters per second times delta T, which is, looks like 0 0.03 seconds. Okay, 9 times 0 0.03 is going to be a 0.27, so we're definitely going to get a 20.27. Uh, negative 4, that's a 0.12, it's going to be less than, so 8, so 0.788. And uh, negative 12 plus a positive 0.18 is going to be negative 11.82 meters. Questions? Okay. Now, one thing about this equation that may not, it, is that because it's a vector equation, and we talked about equality of vectors, when two vectors are equal, this vector, or that vector, and this vector, there's a lot of constraints on what has to be the same about these vectors. Okay, remember we talked about this. So this is a question about the meaning. And here, here's what we're asking. A ball travels through the air. So this is, this is, is the ball leaves a glowing red trail. Um, so this is the x-axis, y-axis, that's its path. Uh, at location A and B here, we're interested in the arrow that that is closest to the direction of the average velocity as the ball travels between A and B. Okay? So we're not asking for numbers now, we're asking for directions. What does the equation tell you about directions? Let's see what you said. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, well it might be four, but it might be three. More people vote for four. So, so this was not completely obvious. Here's what I mean by information in the equation. Remember we talked about the fact that if we said a vector A was equal to a vector B, that said the X components had to be equal and the Y components and the Z components, but also the magnitude of A had to be equal to magnitude of B and the direction of A had to be equal to the direction of B. Well, here's some vectors here. Here's a vector V average. That's the one we're interested in. Here's a vector delta R. That's the change in position going from A to B. So what does this vector delta R look like? Well, let's, let's use the cursor as an origin here. So let's say the origin's right there. So we have R initial here and R final there. And they're tail to tail. So R final minus R initial, that's delta R, is the vector going from there to there, isn't it? That's the vector delta R. Now, this equation tells us that the direction of V average has to be the same as the direction of delta R divided by delta T. Now, can delta T is a scalar, that's fine. Is it possible for delta T to be negative? We're going forward here in time, so no. Therefore, it can't change the direction of delta R. It can shrink it, expand it. So this equation tells us that the direction of V average is going to be the same as the direction of delta R. And that means that the direction of the average velocity is indeed 4. Because it has to be the same as the direction of delta R. Now, if you said 3, what is that the direction of? The instantaneous velocity, isn't it? That was the velocity at that instant, and you know that it actually changed a lot by the time it got. So what's the relationship between instantaneous velocity and average velocity? Well, there's a limit in here, isn't there? This is. So if we have, I'll try to 
try to redraw this. So here's our here's our curve. Here's A. Here's B. So that's delta R1. If we took a shorter time interval, it wouldn't go as far. So that would be delta R2. If we took an even shorter time interval, it wouldn't go as far. So that would be delta R3. So the direction of the average velocity here would be that, 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 and we see that as the time interval gets shorter and shorter, the average velocity gets closer and closer to the instantaneous velocity. And so that the instantaneous velocity is indeed tangent to the curve. So we could write this in, in calculus notation as V instantaneous is the limit as delta T goes to zero of delta R over delta T. Now there's a couple things to note about drawing arrows to represent vectors. It's like to point them out. One is that by convention, when we draw an arrow like to represent something like velocity, we put the tail at the center of the object. And the direction of the arrow we draw represents the direction of the quantity like velocity. The length is proportional to its magnitude. Now notice that on this graph, um, the units of this graph are meters, because this is x and y. That's a picture of a trajectory. If we're going to draw velocity, an arrow representing velocity, we draw it here with its tail on the object. Velocity has units of meters per second. So it's got completely different units from meters. So we have to pick a scale. So we say, OK, we're going to use 3 meters per second is going to be that long in this graph. So we've imposed a second scale on the graph, and then we have we have to stick to that. So implicitly, we're actually using more than one scale instead of units on a graph. 